Lo aplaudimos. Ya está. ¡Aleluya! 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 Put your hands up and say with me, by the stripes of Jesus and his shed blood, I've been made righteous, holy, and just, wealthy, and healthy, wise, and rich, loving, peaceful, joyful, patient, self-controlled, enriched in all things, lacking nothing, having all his promises that are yea and amen in Christ Jesus, filled with the fullness of his spirit, favor, wisdom, love, and revelation of the knowledge of him. I declare that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not from beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. And I freely receive in every area of my life what you so freely given me in Christ Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Put your hands back up and say with me. I say to you, Papa. And to you, Jesus, and to you, Holy Ghost, 999 thousands, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillion, sextillion, septillion, Google, Googleplexes, of Googleplexes, and infinity, and infinity plexes, to the power of the same. Of hallelujahs, of hallelujahs and thank yous, and, thank you. and, we, love you. and we love you, and I love you, I love you. Hallelujah. hallelujah, and thank you. thank you. Give the Lord a hand, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. So nice to be at the lighthouse. You guys are a blessing. This ministry is a blessing. The leaders of this ministry are a blessing. And there's so much history there, so many testimonies. You know, I, I titled the message today, uh, Remember Lot's Wife. And Lot's wife was known for... Lot's wife was known for looking back and turning into a pillar of salt. But the only time we look back is to be reminded of the glory of God and the miracle of God in our life. Amen. That's the only time that, it, that, that it's worthy to look back. All right, look what the Bible says in Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, 29 says, the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be to the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day which he shall be upon the house, in that day he which is upon the house top and his stuff in the house, let him not go down and take it away. He that is in the field, let him not likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Father, in the name Jesus, I thank you even now, Lord God, for speaking to us, challenging us, transforming us, Lord God, renewing us, perfecting us, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that the message today, Lord God, will impact us. It will remind us, Lord God, of what you have for us, Lord. Even now, Lord, I thank you that you are and you do in our lives exceedingly far above, more abundantly, greater than, way over than our highest prayers, our wildest imaginations and deepest desires, according to your power that worketh within us, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, 
Amen. You know, I'm going to take this off. I didn't believe you when I told you it was going to be hot. <laughs> Hallelujah. So before, before we, we go into the subject of remembers Lot's wife, I want to talk about three different little things here. I don't know how much time I got, but being that Bishop Tony is not here today. <laughs> oh! I'm sure he won't mind. I won't be very long, but you never know. There's several things that I wanted to touch before we got on with the message. I know that you all have been talking about holiness. And holiness is one of the most important things, all right? The problem with holiness is that we work real hard at becoming holy instead of knowing that we are holy. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. If I were to say, how many sinners we got in the house? Raise your hands. All right, well, sinners don't make it to heaven. Right. And sinners can't be holy. Yeah. You see, the truth is, yes, sir. all right, Jesus became sin. So that you may be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. And you got to convince yourself. Woo! You got to be convinced that you are holy. And once you convince yourself that you are holy, then holy and the fruits of holiness start to take place. Amen. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? But the struggle is we're always trying to become holy. And, you know, it seems like we never make it. Yeah, but when you realize that you are, I guarantee you that ho knowing that you're already holy is your anchor. Yeah. All right? And it's just like knowing that you are righteous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Now, make no mistake, there's a difference between saying that you're holy than being holy. Okay, now, we'll make mistakes along the way and things happen so forth. But remember in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, that Jesus says, Why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I say? Amen. Okay? He says, Depart from me. But Lord, I did miracles. I cast out devils. He says, I never knew you. Okay? Now, the truth is, we can't be saved, always saved. Know that, because God made you holy, all right? You were adopted, all right? You are in him. You know the story that I've told here times back. I w walked into a courtroom. A, bro a brother of mine was getting divorced, and uh, he asked me to go to the courtroom. And uh, I walked in. Before we got into the courtroom, there was this little uh, bailiff lady that says, listen up. This is my courtroom. The moment you pass through those doors, you're in my territory. And if you just whisper, I'm going to throw you out. So we all walked in like sheep <laughs> for the slaughter, man. I mean, and God, the judge called this first case, which is a case of adoption. Here came this 85-year-old man with a 35-year-old guy that, man, he was marked with sin. And the judge says, uh, I see that you're here for an adoption. But before we go through adoption, could we go, could you give us a little bit of the history? So the 85-year-old uh, uh, man says, I've had him since he was 10 days old. I attempted to adopt him several times throughout the years, but never <clears throat> finished through. So the judge says, sir, so why are you adopting him now? He's 35 years old. And what that old man said next almost got me kicked out of the courtroom because the old man said, Your Honor, I want to adopt him because I want to give him everything I have. Mm. Clink! Mm -hmm. My bulb. Mm -hmm. Jesus died to give us everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? And I want to give him my name. Mm -hmm. Boop! Yeah. I wanted to shout hallelujah with everything I had, but I remember what that bailiff told me, that if I <laughs> so much breathed, she was going to kick me out. So what happened next almost got me kicked out again because the judge said, he said, sir, are you sure you want to adopt him? 
Because adoption is the only legal procedure that is irrevocable. Man, I want to shout out to you. know what that means, irrevocable? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That means if, 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 if you sincerely gave your life to Jesus yeah. Yeah. with all your heart, yeah. hey, listen, nobody yeah. can take you away from his hands. Yeah. Save all with save. Yeah. 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 The moment I walked out of that courtroom, I shouted, hallelujah. Yeah. And that's where we're at. And that's what you got to be convinced yes, of. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, that you're saved, Hallelujah. you're holy, yes, you're righteous. All right, we come to church too many times trying to become holy, trying to become righteous. All right, we're trying to become what we already are. Right. We're, great, we're trying to do what we already, that what already has been done. Ah. We're trying to get what has been gotten already. Ah. And it's a mindset. All right, if not, you go in these religious circles yeah. trying to do all these different things. And I'm telling you that it's a different mentality and your life your lifestyle will change if you uh hear what i'm saying and you get revelation of what i'm saying you hear me yeah, yeah. so say with me i'm holy i'm holy i'm righteous i'm righteous i be i, be. I, am. I am and i are, and I are. <laughs> good <laughs> even when you even when you're going to tough time the bible says a righteous man falls seven times he gets back up yeah the thing is, don't stay down. Yes, sir. Don't stay down. Second thing I wanted to talk to you a little bit here. Uh, you know, I don't come around these parts as often as I like, so I got to throw everything I can. <laughs> All right. Is uh, the kingdom of God. Matthew 6.33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added on. Now, when we think about the kingdom, many times we don't realize that the kingdom of God, the church is inside the kingdom. The kingdom of God has the seven mountains, government, science, all right? It has medicine, it has family, has entertainment, has business, it has all these different mountains in which all of us are in one of those mountains, all right, like one day or another, all right? I have learned, this is experience, because I'm telling you, because I was born fat, ugly, and poor, I was always trying to do something, trying to make it better, trying to become prettier, trying to, trying to uh, lose weight, trying to all those things. And I became, all right, a workaholic in the kingdom in the sense that I will work myself to death and many times not get the things that God had promised me. Because I was seeking things instead of seeking the kingdom. But I've learned that if I learn to pray correctly, that means when you come here and you kneel down, and the moment you get up, you are convinced that God heard your prayer and that he will answer your prayer. All right? He will do it. So you, all you do is you basically... All right, attend to seeking the kingdom of God. All right, seeking his face, knowing him, knowing the Holy Ghost. I've been in the Lord now 43 years, and I'll tell you, read the Bible dozens and dozens and dozens. I got over 3,000 books in my library, I'm telling you, and I can't get enough. I haven't reached it. I'm still trying to apprehend. All right, trying to get what, that which I was apprehended for because he's unsearchable. He's you know, it's, it's beyond. That's how come I, I praise the Lord by the, by the trillions and Google plexes. All right? Because one Google is not enough for me. All right? I, gotta, I mean, and you know how much is a Google plex? All right? Do you know that you could get all the atoms in the universe and it won't reach a Google plex? Think on that. <laughs> it's beyond. But God is worthy even greater than we fall short even when we pray that way. But he's worthy of being uh, praised and worshiped that way. Amen. Now, <clears throat> notice that I talked about holiness and I talked about the kingdom before I'm going to talk about my next, the third step. And, the, and that's before I get to the message. All right? And the third step has to do with what's going on. 
around us today? What's going on around us? The world is upside down. Okay? Our politicians are upside down. Right? And I'm not just saying Democrats. I'm saying Democrats and Republicans. It's upside down. They have sold our country down the river because of money. Back in 1973, you, you couldn't print money unless there was gold backing for that dollar. Yes, sir. All right? Nixon got our dollar off the gold standard. And since then, we've been printing money out of nothing, out of air. So the globalists, the new world order has been using, they're the central bankers, they've been using that money to buy out the giants of industries. All right, the Facebooks and the Amazons and the Googles and all that. All right, and they've been, they've been, they've been, um, mm, they've been bribing our politicians. And you see, for 40 years, 40, 50 years, we Americans have been blind. We were too busy chasing things, all right? And we weren't aware of what was going on. Now, I know that some of you may not like Trump, but I'm going to tell you about Trump. Listen, there's a great man of God that says, unless you deal with local issues and, and, and issues of the day, you're not preaching the full gospel. Okay, so if you don't agree with me, have patience with me, okay, because all I'm asking you is to test what I'm about to tell you. That's all. If I'm wrong, I'll be back here to tell you, forgive me. I have a habit that if I, if I uh, tell you something wrong in public and in private, I'll ask for forgiveness in, pri in private. But if I tell you something wrong in public, I I will come up and tell you in public I was wrong, okay? So there's been an awakening happening. I don't know if you notice the awakening that's happening, all right? People are pushing back in the school boards. People are pushing back in the uh, uh, pride parades. People are pushing back, all right, back at government and say this is not the way it's supposed to be. Everything is being revealed. Okay? Now, it wasn't always this way because we have the tendency to want, okay, to believe our government, correct? Brother, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> you lost weight or what? Yes, sir. You did? Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you doing? I need to do something. And, uh, Oh, man. Man, I can't take too much off. <laughs> you, put it on. you know what it is? I think it's around this. Is it right? What it is is right here on my. No? Okay, go ahead. Cut, cut the tape, please. It seems to me that the last few years has been one thing after another. I now know what Paul meant when he said, I've been buffeted. Yeah. I've been given thorn in the flesh by the messenger of Satan. All right, one thing after another, fighting battles. So I, I had this uh, br real bad bronchitis, and they gave me this pump, and the, and the doctor says, two pumps. So I'll go home and go do six. My, my, my wife would say, the doctor said two. I says, I know he said two, but I'm going to do six. <laughs> Little did I know, all right, that it had steroids. You know what steroid does to you? All right? Anyhow, going back. And uh, so, how many of you know that the 2020 election deal is not over yet? Okay? Actually, they're saying Trump is going to be indicted for January the 6th. Right? So listen to me.
Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, so this is what happens. And, 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 and listen, just, just be patient with me because if I'm wrong, I'll come back and tell you I'm wrong. What I think is going to happen, okay? And I'm going to say it in a, in a nutshell. All right? In 2018, he, he wrote an executive uh, order giving the military the power to, uh, to come into American land. You see, the military can't get involved in American soil. Okay, because that, there's a, a law on that. But if there's interference from outside, inside, the military has the right to come in, all right, and defend the Constitution. Okay? But what happened? All right, Trump says, I got them all. Because he said he was going to drain the swamp. The swamp is the rhinos, Republicans, and the rhino, or whatever you call them. Democrats, all right? Now, there's good Democrats, good Republicans, but they're bad of both. And they're the ones that have done damage to our country. Trump said, all right, I got them all. But when time came, all right, he said, you know what? I'm going to let this guy take. Because if Trump said, if Trump would have said, military come in, Everybody said, oh, this guy's a dictator. This guy's going to do this and that. He couldn't do that. What did he do? He said, let this guy take in. Let the people see. If he would have said that the FBI, the FBI is corrupted, that the Department of Justice was corrupted, nobody would have believed him. Absolutely nobody. Because in our minds, we highly esteem these uh, 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 government agencies, the CIA so forth. But we're living in a time of 2020 where everything, the nearer, we, the nearer we come to the coming of Christ, the more clear everything's becoming, 2020. And what has been done in secret will be brought to light. Okay? And these things will be brought to light. So, it's been proven already that our, our, our court system has been uh, uh, manipulated by bribes or by blackmail or different things, and you can't get a good, you can't get a right, just ruling. All right? You can't. So the only option there is at the right time is going to come, all right, by the military. Now, this indictment with Trump, people are saying, oh, they're going to indict me. He's going to go to court. He wants to go to court. You know why he wants to go to court? All right? Because when he goes to court, the, 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 the whole world, the cameras are going to be there. And he's going to present evidence. All right? And the whole world is going to be the jury. The nation is going to be the jury. No matter how much they cheat, they're going to see it all. And then the time will come, all right, when the military will take place. Now, if I'm wrong, another thing's going to happen. Get ready, because we're getting ready to go to Great Tribulation. Because if things continue to go the way it's going, it's terrible. Right? I believe that there's going to be a reprieval. Because actually, we're on the Jewish calendar, the year 5,773, instead of the year 6,023. You see, the tribulation was supposed to have started in the year uh, 6,000, more or less around there. All right? That's what the Bible says right before the, the seventh millennium. It hasn't happened. We're already 23 years in. I believe he's going to put a stop. I believe that the world is going to know that God is God. Yeah. What's getting ready to happen, what's getting ready to happen will so be so mind-boggling to us. That it be no shadow of doubt that it was God, not Trump. All right, Trump couldn't think of this. It was God behind all this. Yes, sir. All right, and evil. I mean, from child trafficking. How many of you've seen the movie Sound of Freedom? All right, you need to go see it. All right, you need to go see it. In fact, you know what? It, it'd be a, a good idea to try to take take the the faith home. It's such a powerful movie and true. 
I mean, for years, 3,000, for years, 3 million children have been disappearing from around the world. 3 million. People are saying, but where do they go? I'll tell you where they go. They're sold as sex slaves. They, they're sold as sacrifice to Satan. They're sold for body parts. And they're sold for the blood. They beat the kids and they let those hormones go. And they draw that hormone and it produces a drug that's the highest drug ever. And it's being sold. It's very expensive. It's being sold to the elites. Okay? Now, let's get back to the message. <laughs> I could go there. I could go there, but, I, I, you know, I came with a reason and a purpose. All right? So what happens here is, all right, God, Jesus, in red letters, said, remember Lot's wife. Now, what was the problem with Lot's wife? Okay? If you notice... All right, that Lot ended up in, in uh, Sodom, okay? When Abraham told his nephew, listen, this has become too big. This land has become too big for, for us. You choose which way to go. You can see this in Genesis 19, all right? Lot went in the areas that it looked more glitter. His greed and selfishness. Instead of honoring Abraham, he took that route, all right, and he ended up in Sodom, all right, he, I don't know if he was married before or after, it doesn't say, all right, but either way, all right, he had children in Sodom, all right, now, why would, why would Jesus say, all right, to remember Lot's, right, why would he mention that, because she looked back. All right, she looked back. Now, if you take the contents, the Bible says in Genesis that Lot sat at the gates. So we already know that he was wealthy, all right? But he also, uh, uh, he established himself as a political f uh, figure in the city, okay? He had influence. He had money. He had influence. And he, even though the Bible says he was righteous, right? Because the Bible says, in, and I think it's first. Peter 1, I think, it says that righteous Lot. And you ask yourself, how could, we ask yourself the question, how could righteous Lot live in Sodom? Well, very easy. How are we living in the culture we're living now? No difference. Okay? No difference at all. We're living in the same manner. Okay? And the angels came and they say, hey, God's going to judge this place. You got to get up and go. Now, imagine, all right? Imagine the rapture doesn't take place the way we think so. And I'll give you a little, little bit of it in a little bit because there's discussion on that back and forth. All right? And where to take the mark of the beast because there's, you know, you can't buy or sell. And it happens suddenly. All right? By taking the mark of the beast, you're going to have to give up. By not taking the mark of the beast, you're going to have to give up everything you've worked for. Everything you are. Everything. Suddenly. And that's what happened to Lot's wife. All right? She, in her heart, still had an affection, a deep affection for that way of life. The Babylonian life or the sodomistic life. And she was warned not to look back. And she looked back. Now some of us, all right, sometimes look back, all right, because we get frustrated. Other of us look back, all right, because, gee, if we could only go back to the way it was. And the problem about looking back is this. Is that when you look back and you fall in love with the things of this world, what you are demoting and you are uh, being ungrateful for the reason that Jesus died for us. Because Jesus died to give us a better future, better things. 
everything you hope for. How many people here would love to be a king or queen? Come on, let's be honest. I sure like to be. How many of you would love to live in a palace? How many of you would like to have all the gadgets? You know, everything. All right. How many of you would, would, would like to not have to pay bills? Uh, I, <laughs> sounding good now, right? How many of you, all right, want to get past not being ugly like I was? Or fat like I was? Or poor like I was. I mean, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think, gee, Lou, you got to lose weight. I mean, not everybody was blessed like this young man here to be good looking and, and not gain a pound or anything. <laughs> right? But the truth is, I love myself. Because yes. Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yes. So I get up in the morning accepting who God made me. But I know that in the future, hey, I'm not going to have to worry about weight or ugly or poor or staying rich or whatever it is. Because it's what God has prepared for us. Now, keep that in mind because that's the Bible says in 1 John 3.3 3, that the hope, right, the hope of the coming of Christ will purify you. It will purify you. So if you keep yourself in the attitude of looking forward, all right, for what's coming, and you keep excited about what's coming, it'll keep you holy. It'll keep you doing the right things. It'll keep you getting up. It'll keep you doing what you're supposed to be doing because you know that there's something better that God has prepared for us. Yes, sir. Paul said if there's no resurrection, you know what? Then our faith is in vain. All right? It's, it's not worth it. All right? If the dead are not raised from the dead, if the dead are not raised from the dead, all right, it's vain. There's no purpose. Go out and do whatever you want, but that's not the case here. Okay? Now, when we do this, all right, you got to remember, all right, look what it says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. It says this. 2 Peter 2, 6 says, Turning the cities, all right, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Okay? Judgment's coming. So anything that glitters on this side of heaven is going to be destroyed sooner or later. And you need to know that. That the only thing that's going to stand is the church and the kingdom of God and the promises of God. It's only. And you got to look forward to what God is getting, bringing. In fact, that is exactly what, that's exactly what kept all the Old Testament saints. Let me read some scriptures to you. All right, look what it says. Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Verse 9 says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as a strange company, uh, country, Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac, Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which foundation and whose builder and maker is God. Amen. What kept that man going was looking forward. Amen. The only time you look back is just to, uh, to memorize, mesmerize over the goodness of God and the things that he's done in our lives. But nothing more than looking forward. All right, notice what, what it says in, uh, what, what it says about Moses. It says, at verse 24, by, by faith Moses, when he had come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing to rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for that he had respected Onto the recompense of the reward. That's what kept 
It says, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. He looked forward. And that's what you got to do. Look forward. Because everything that your heart, everything that your heart longs for is going to be found forward. Not behind. Forward. Hallelujah. Forward. Yes, 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 yes. And every time you find yourself in a temptation or find yourself in a struggle, yeah. remember Lot's wife. She turned back and she was turned into a pillar of salt. Yes. Genesis 19, 26 says. Okay? And if you look back, look what Jesus said. Let me read a couple of these things that Jesus has said. Jesus said, in Luke 9, 59, he says, he said to another, follow me. And he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Luke 9, 60, Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Verse 61, and then another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but first let me go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said to him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Philippians 3.12. Not as though I have already obtained, either were ready, already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that which I also am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it. But this one thing I do, forgetting yes. those things which are behind, yes. forgetting those things which yes. are behind, yes. reaching forward to those things which are before us. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. So often, you know, people are looking to the world and staring at the world. All right, wishing they could be rich or wishing they could be this or wishing to be that. You know what? None of you. Jim G uh, Bill Gates has nothing on you all. Yes. Nothing. Uh, Jeff Bezos, whatever his name is, has nothing on you. Okay? They have nothing. But you need to see yourself that way. Yeah. All right? You need to see yourself as a child of the king. That's the attitude. Okay, that's what makes the difference. Okay? It says, uh, it says this. We know that when the rapture comes or the end of the tribulation, one of the two, my wife says she's going on the first bus. I wrote about the second bus wishing that I was wrong that we should go on the first bus, all right? But I just call it as I see it, okay? But either way, whether the rapture or tribulation, the next period that we're going to into is the thousand-year reign of Christ. So what is the thousand-year uh, reign of Christ? The devil is put in prison, all right? No more sin, all right? Jesus is going to come rule with a rod of iron, right? And there's going to be peace and righteousness and justice for a thousand years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, some of us have the opinion that we're going to live in eternity in heaven. No. Heaven is not where God has us to be in eternity. All right? Heaven is Papa's house, all right? And we go to Papa's house to fellowship and to see him and to tell him everything that's happening in our lives, okay? But really, beyond that, God is going to do some extraordinary things, okay? Let me, let me show you. Go with me a minute to Ephesians 2.7. Ephesians 2, 6 says, and has raised us up. I'm sorry, man. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm giving the, the sound text a hard time back there. And it says, Ephesians 2, 6 says, And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That means that in the ages to come, the things that God is going to show us is so supernatural. Hey, listen, four years ago, I suffered a heart attack, was in the hospital three, 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 uh, three months, died three times, okay, got taken to heaven, and God showed me two things, all right? First thing he showed me was I couldn't describe what I saw. There was absolutely no words. You know, you know how you, you see an airplane, you see an airplane? I could tell you whatever it was that I was looking at. All I could tell you that it was out of this world. It was amazing, marvelous, fabulous, all right? Over and beyond, exceedingly, far above, more abundantly, greater than, way over. Okay? That I could tell you. Now, I was able to see something, and I'll tell you this as a testimony. My brother, uh, I, I, the Lord takes me to this throne, and it was a small throne, and there was a, qu a choir of angels here, and there was a little baby on that throne. And one of the angels comes to me and says, uh, hey, you know who that baby is? And I says, no. He says, the baby belongs to Christina. Christina was the daughter or is the daughter of my brother. My brother has three daughters, and all three had, had, had uh, miscarriages. I already had seven grandkids, and my brother didn't have not one because they kept having miscarriage. So that angel told me, I'm going to tell you what to tell them, all right, so they stop having miscarriages. So after six weeks of being down, I wake up, everybody's shouting that I'm waking up, opening my eyes. He's, he's alive, he's coming through. You know, they didn't know because the last time I was dead, I was, I, I, I was dead for 18 minutes. So they didn't know if it damaged my, my, my brain. So when I started coming through, everybody was like, hey, is his brain working? I mean, it wasn't really working before, but is it working now? <laughs> and... As I'm mumbling, I realize that it's Christina and my brother, my wife there. And I tell Christina, you're pregnant. And, and they think I was mumbling, jumbling after six weeks of being down. Nine months later, she had her first baby. Yeah. Listen to this. And in three, three years and three months, <coughs> my brother has eight grandkids and one on the way. Three years. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo. laughs> so there's things that, that it's going to marvel us. I mean, you'll be the greatest fool in the world to turn down what God is offering us. Many of us work all our lives to reach retirement, okay? And then we find out that retirement is not all that, Right? I mean, it's good, but it's not all that. Because now you get to rest, but now you got the pains, you know? And you, and you have to watch your money so you can make it through. Now, listen to me. What God is getting ready to do is so marvelous, okay? Go with me a minute to this is, this is the next phase after the thousand years. Go with me there. The next phase after the thousand years. Revelations 21.1. Revelations 21.1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no more sea. What do you mean that the first heaven and the first earth pass away. Exactly. The only difference is that you and I are going to see, all right, creation. How many ever wonder about, man, where was God when creation came in? What was he doing? Well, get ready. You're going to have, all right, first 
seat, um, uh, to be able to see it all. All right? Now you say, but I never heard that. Okay, well, you never heard it, but it doesn't mean that it's not there in the Bible. It's Isaiah 66, 22 says. Isaiah 66, 22 says, For as the new heaven and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Woo. All right? 65, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Hmm. Now, let me read a, a couple other things here to you, and I want you to see it. Go with me a minute to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter, 10, uh, chapter 1, verse 10. Hebrews 1.10 says, Thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. Hebrews 1.11, it says, And thou shalt perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall old, wax old as garment. As a vexture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be, I, I didn't copy it right. What does it say? Shall be what? Changed, and they shall be changed. It's talking about the heaven. Now, it's not talking about heaven where God lives. It's talking about the solar system. It's talking about, all right, the earth, okay? That is going to be folded up. It's, it, it's mind-boggling, all right? Notice what it says in, in 2 Peter 3.12. Looking for and hasting into the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens shall be. Be, being on fire shall dissolve, and the elements shall melt with ferment heat. So what am I saying? All right? What am I saying? All right, well, go with me to, go with me a minute to um, Revelations 22. Well, Revelation 21. Look what it says. Revelation 21, 3 says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Well, that's not the one I'm looking for. Two. Here it is. 21, 2. I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from, from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Well, hold on a minute. I thought the wedding was going to be in between the seven years tribulation. I heard that. I heard Perry and everybody say that for years, that the wedding is going to be, all right, once the rapture takes place. Here it says... All right, that the wedding is going to happen, all right, it's going to happen after the tribulation, after the new heavens and earth are being done. Now, granted, you got to study this, but I'm just throwing out seed here so you guys get hungry and go out and say, man, i got to study that. I, I, I don't catch everything that the apostle said, but, you know, if he said it, it was for a reason. All right. The new Jerusalem will come down. All right. It says in uh, somebody read to me Revelations 22 1, please. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going.
All right, now notice this. In today's dimension and dispensation, we live in a, in a dispensation of opposites. Right, wrong, up, down, good, bad, holy, evil. And, and, and in our mind, we think this way. That's how we think. That's what's inside of us. That's how we're trained. But we're coming into a dimension that those things are past. All right? We won't have to think of things like that. Now, I haven't figured it all out yet, but I know it's a lot better than what we got now. When you take away the sin and the devil and everything else, <laughs> anything's better than that. Right? But we're getting ready to be taken to see things. All right? Where was God before he created the heavens and the earth? Hmm. How did he create the horse and the monkey? And how did he create, you know, the, the anebas and the atoms and the cell and everything that takes in creation? I'm interested in that. But before I get to that, I'm going to take a thousand years vacation first. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I get to that. There's no old people in heaven. Stop and think about that. There's no ugly people there. There's no fat people there. All right? There's no poor people there. All right? Everybody has nice homes. I don't know if we're going to get chariots of fire or chariots with horses, but we're going to have some type of moving vehicle. Why would you give that up for this world? Now, the world is not bad in the sense that God created it. The world in its, in, its, in its reality is just a glimpse of what God has for us in eternity, but it's all messed up. All right? It's all messed up because the devil's messed up, and the devil messes people up, and we get all messed up. And we got to live through all these curves and ups and downs and everything else. Right? But I'm telling you, when the Bible says in Isaiah and it says in Matthew that I will bring the mountains low and the valleys high, that's what he's talking. He's getting rid of all these opposites. He's making it all right. He's doing it all new. And then when we get tired of that, the Bible says in the dispensation of the ages, he's going to do it again. Stop and think about it. So with that in mind, with that in mind, I think I did pretty good. <laughs> Boy, I was hearing them. Hey, you know, Apostle Priest, just that one hour, man. So what happens here? It's up to you. We are today with decisions we made yesterday. We will be tomorrow the decisions that we make today. You know, sometimes or often we blame the devil for everything. No, it's not all the devil. A lot is us. All right? And I've learned several tricks. All right? You want to beat sin and those things that have brought you down, learn to hate them. Learn to hate the things that have brought you down. Acquire, ask God to give you a hatred for whatever it is. Because you're not going to take what you hate. For example, hey, listen, I could eat anything in the world. I could eat oxtail, I could eat horse, uh, rain door eyes, I could do, eat anything. But don't give me salary. <laughs> I won't eat it. I won't eat it. Because you don't eat, the, you don't do the things you hate. So if you're struggling in areas, what you do is you ask for it to acquire and hate it. And I tell you, it will strengthen you. And then you look forward for the greatness of what God has prepared for you, which is everything you have desire anyhow. And the truth is, we're almost there. 
We're right around the corner. Glory to God. We're not going to have to wait. Well, if, if God puts a reprieve, or like I said, you know, we might have to wait the 200 years to the 6,000-year mark because God puts a reprieval. There's a huge revival that everybody's talking about, right? But, you know, just like Israel, they, there was revivals, and then they turned their back on God again. And then that tribulation and everything else will be pushed to the end. That's just a theory, okay? Now, I have a, in, the, in the next... I, I, I when, when, uh, two years ago, I said, Nick, it's right around the corner. But I, didn't, I, I couldn't see the whole picture. I didn't see that we Americans had to have our eyes open to what was re getting ready to come. Because unless our eyes were open, we weren't going to believe how deep we have been. How deep we have been. Okay, where the elites are buying children. Right now, ch children are uh, uh, a commodity. They're being, they're being sold for $50,000 per person. All right, it's big time. $3 million, 3 million kids disappearing. Okay, women as well. Okay, let me tell you this. All right, we didn't see that. All right, because we've been programmed by the higher ups to think different and to become sheeps. Okay. And we've been believing the fake news for a long time. And I say to you, America and the world is waking up. Our eyes are open. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Somebody say it is finished. It is finished. No turning back. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Apostle Lewis. Amen. We're so blessed by that word. Amen. Were you guys blessed this morning? Father, I thank you for those seeds, Lord. I thank you that they go into good ground, Lord God, and they're going to grow and multiply. Ephesians times Ephesians 3.20 right here at the Lighthouse Freedom Center. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Just to let y'all know, we got hot empanadas in the cafe. First come, first serve. You better hurry. Oh, wait, wait, though. You can't go yet. Hold on. All right. But they are in the cafe as soon as you guys want to leave. Amen. Raise your hands to the Lord. Father, I thank you so much for your word that's been sown in our hearts, Lord God. I thank you for the truth. And I thank you so much that the truth says that we are your adopted sons and daughters, Lord God. And that is an inheritance package, a benefits plan, Lord God, that is unstoppable even in these last days, Father God. So I thank you, Lord God, that we sealed that word in our hearts, Lord God, that we will not turn back. We will not look back, but we will continue to press forward to the goal that's ahead of us, laying in heavenly places with you, Father God. So I thank you for that. I pray right now, Lord God, that you put a holy hatred of sin in our hearts. One, Lord God, that would not be satisfied looking to the left, to the right, to the back. No, but that one would stay fixed and focused on your promise right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we believe that. Ephesians 3.20. Now, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hey, the prayer team will be up here if you need any special prayer. Amen.